Welcome everybody. As many of you guys know, there's been a lot of disruption when it comes to the availability and affordability of PC components lately. In the past, we've reviewed a lot of pre-built PCs on the channel, both budget and high-end builds. We've covered the $600 Rogue and the $1,000 Legacy builds from VRLA Tech, but today we're going to have a look at the updated legacy PC coming in at $1,050. I'll share my thoughts and opinions on the value and capabilities of this build in today's PC climate. As usual, I make absolutely nothing off of any of you guys' purchases. I have no promo codes for you guys. I tested this PC as an independent gaming rig, a dedicated stream PC, and a combo PC for gaming and streaming simultaneously. All right. Let's dive in. The legacy build arrived, properly packed, foam inserts on the sides and interior of the case, protecting the build and all the internal components during shipping. So got this bad boy out of the box, removed the internal foam and she was plug and play, ready to go. Really quickly, I'm gonna cover everything components wise in the build and then we'll cover the stress test and its capabilities. The CPU is a Ryzen 5 3600, six cores, 12 threads, running at 4.2 gigahertz with a standard AMD Stealth cooler. Graphics card is by EVGA. It's a 1660 Super with six gigabytes of GDDR6. We got 16 gigs of 3200 RAM by XPG. All of this is running on an ASRock B450M Pro 4 motherboard. The power supply is by EVGA as well, the 510BP. For storage, there is a one terabyte Western Digital Blue hard disk drive comboed with a 120 gigabyte solid state drive by Team Group. There's a total of six 120 millimeter case fans, three in the front running as intake, two in the top and one at the rear running as exhaust. And the case is by VRLA Tech. The RGB fans throughout the build are controlled via a simple button press at the top front of the build. There are several color presets to scroll through, everything from static colors, no RGB, to full on blasting rainbows throughout your PC. Tons of connection options in the front and rear IO, a total of five USB 3s, four standard USBs, one USB type C, headphone, microphone, old school connections for mice, keyboards, and monitors. And the GPU has one display port, one HDMI, and one DVI connection. So the first thing I did is jump into stability testing the PC, stress testing the CPU, the GPU, the memory, and the storage. The Ryzen 3600 didn't disappoint, running clock speeds of four to 4.2 gigahertz over extended durations of time with zero hiccups. The highest temps we saw on the CPU were 87.9 degrees Celsius. The GPU torture tests were done on a variety of Furmark and MSI combustor softwares. These tests are designed to maximize the load on the GPU. The frames per second we see in these tests don't accurately reflect what we'll see while gaming. But what was most important for me to see from these tests was that I couldn't get it to crash. The 1660 Super definitely handles all these stress tests more fluidly than the RX 580 did that this build used to come with. Max temps we saw on this GPU were right at 64 degrees Celsius, steady. Now for the fun stuff. Gaming. All the games we played, we were running on 1080p. We played some Apex Legends, some Call of Duty, some Dead by Daylight, some DayZ, and some New World. It's important to note that the frame rates you'll experience are always dependent on your in game settings. So if you run on ultra to high settings, expect less frames per second. I run custom graphic settings for all the games I play, but overall, I do tend to stay in the medium graphic setting ballpark. This system did surprise me though. The 1660 Super definitely outperforms the RX 580. On games like Apex and Call of Duty, I was easily reaching the 100 to 140 plus frames per second. Dead by Daylight and DayZ, we hit the 90 to 125 frames per second range. And New World, which was much more graphically intensive on the GPU and stressful on the CPU, we still nabbed the 90 to 110 frames per second mark. Finally, we get into the challenging portion of the testing for this PC. First up, can I have it run as a dedicated stream PC, taking all the audio and video from my main PC, an external mic and camera, and mix and mash everything together and render out a polished product smoothly. And we streamed for hours on Twitch, no problem, at 1080p, 60 frames per second, at a bitrate of 6,000 KBS. So to make it harder, I attempted to run this build as a solo stream PC. 
So it had to run the game while simultaneously mashing together all those external sources and the gameplay itself and rendering out a live stream. And surprisingly, it didn't disappoint. I did have to put a cap on the in-game frames per second and lower the stream's frames per second on export, but still I was playing at 80 to 100 frames per second, running a 1080p 30 frames per second stream while pushing a 1080p and 4K monitor all at once. So needless to say, I was impressed, at least for PCs at this price range. All right, now for the pros and cons to this build and my thoughts. Pros. In short, it's a high performing, relatively budget build, not the absolute best of the best components on the market, but good enough where it matters so that it performs really well and it's current and upgradable. There are some notable differences in the updated legacy build that I feel are worth covering. The new case is definitely an improvement over the previous one. We've got an improved airflow at the front with air intake coming across the whole front face and the side. And at the top of the case in the previous build, we didn't have any exhaust options. Whereas now we have room for two 120 or two 140 millimeter fans as exhaust. I do like the cable cover in the back, just a few screws and this swings open for access to all of your cabling. And it does a good job of making everything look neat and organized. Both the CPU and GPU upgrades are big enough that it does make a performance difference. I can easily video edit or photo edit on this PC and although I wouldn't call it a 4K gaming rig, I could still game at 1440p or 4K if I wanted to, I just have to expect lower frame rates. It's also important to note that if I had to replicate this build, purchase each component independently, I'd easily be hitting the $1,150 to the $1,200 price range so it is valuable that this build comes in at 1050 bucks and it's plug and play ready to go. It also comes with a one year warranty on all of the hardware in the PC, which is nice. And it is for the most part comprised of all name brand trusted quality components. I always stress this, whether or not you're looking at pre-builds or you're parting out and building your own PC yourself, go for name brand trusted quality over cheap components. Now for the cons. There are a few components in this build that I don't particularly like. Now bear in mind, all of these components are upgradable right in the VRLA site for a small upgrade fee. The power supply to me is the first upgrade I'd make to this system. Power supplies are literally the heartbeat of your PC and instead of a 510 watt 80 plus bronze, I'd probably shoot for a 550 or 600 watt 80 plus gold power supply in this build. Another component component that may be worth expanding on or upgrading would be the storage. The one terabyte hard disk drive and 120 gigabyte solid state drive combo do get the job done. But for anyone considering this build, I'd probably go for a 500 gig or one terabyte solid state drive. Lastly, this isn't so much of a con as it is a recommendation because if I was getting this PC, I would probably want to get an all-in-one cooler for the CPU just because the case definitely has room for it. And when we stress test the CPU at max load, extended durations of time, we were sitting at 87.9 degrees Celsius. So that's not like extremely hot, but you could probably get the PC to be a little bit quieter and run a lot cooler with just a $30 to $50 all-in-one cooler. Besides all that, this is a competitive build when it comes to price, performance, overall value, it does pull its weight, especially with the way PC components prices and availabilities have been in the past few years. I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware prices and availability have been on a hard rise for the past few years. So it is nice to see a PC just hit the mark as far as price to performance. And they're only getting better. VRLA Tech is upgrading these legacy builds to come with RTX 3050 GPUs in Ryzen 5 5500 CPUs at the same $1,050 price. So these legacy builds are gonna be performing even better than the one that I've tested for you today. I did shop around to seek real competition at this price point. And CyberPower PC really didn't have a build right at the $1,050 price. However, NZXT does have their starter PC series with the $1,100 starter build and it doesn't beat the legacy. The CPU processor, the case, and the storage are all better in the legacy. And it's $50 cheaper. Similar story from iBuyPower, their $1,100 build is neck and neck with this legacy build component wise, but the legacy is nearly identical at a cheaper price. So there you have it, my thoughts on the legacy from VRLA Tech. And my advice for anybody looking at pre-builds is to start in this price range because everything's 
current and upgradable, and the performance is decent for the price. And when you go down to the $600, $700 ballpark, you're not getting nearly the bang for your buck performance-wise, and not all the components are current or upgradable. It's just not nearly the same value. You're better off investing a little bit more, getting a heck of a lot more for your money. Just my advice. I do hope this video has helped you in your decision-making process. If it has, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the content. It is greatly appreciated. Notification squad, you guys rock. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Peace.